Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers, and welcome along to my small home studio. Now, in this video, I'm going to have a look at light fall off, which I know sounds like a really dry, boring subject, but trust me, I'll make it as exciting as I can. I'll put the same principles to use at the end in a proper shoot. So whilst you're here, if you haven't already done so, click on the subscribe button because we've got loads of great content coming out on Adorama TV pretty much every single day. Light fall off is one of the principles of light, along with light travels in straight lines. Light travels at the speed of light. Light over distance becomes less bright and more even. What that means is if you're in a studio in control of the light, you can set up a zone where the illumination is really even. You can set up a zone where the illumination is really fast drop off with high contrast. The choice is yours. But to understand how that works, we need to do some tests. So let's get a light set. Let's get a model ready. Let's do some testing. So to really see how light falls off, we could apply a mathematical formula and do the inverse square law, but photography isn't about formulas. It's about actually seeing what's happening. So that's how we're going to work it out. And I'm gonna do it visually on my wall here. So I'm gonna get my flash meter and I'm gonna get my remote control transmitter and I'm gonna meter the back of the wall here just to see what we're getting. And this wall meters at F4, which is lucky because it's like I planned it, isn't it? There we go. So how far along this wall do I need to go before I get one stop more light, F5.6? Well, let's find out. F4.6. Oh, it's exactly there. Perfect. Okay, so that is F5.6 right there. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Let's do another stop. So now we're looking for F8. And it is exactly there. Okay, so that is F8. And then moving along, another stop will be F11, which is there. Now, as I'm doing this, you'll notice that the gaps between each of these stops is reducing. The closer I get to the light, the faster it drops off by a single stop. And that's gonna have an impact when we get to take some photos. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Fern. Fern's gonna be the model for this shoot, but before we get to the fun photography, let's go through the technical bit and see how this actually works with a model. So Fern, can I ask you to stand on the F5.6 marker up against the wall? Perfect. Now, the theory is really simple. I've metered that for F5.6. So if I dial F5.6 into my camera, Fern should be correctly exposed at that point. Let's take a test shot, see how it looks. And sure enough, Fern is correctly exposed at that point. It's a bit brighter towards the flash on the right hand side and a bit darker behind Fern, but the exposure doesn't really shift too much. Okay, Fern, if you'd like to step towards the F8 mark for me. That's perfect, thank you very much. I'll change my camera to F8. Here we go. And at F8, again, Fern is correctly lit. That's gonna be a fairly standard thing through these test shots. But now we can see that the right-hand side is a fair bit brighter than the left-hand side. The fall off of light is happening much quicker, closer to the light source. And to really prove that, Fern, let's go closer. Let's go to F11. Perfect, here we go. Change my camera to F11. And the fall off of light is very intense here. Much brighter on the right, much darker on the left, but we can go even further. Keep going, Fern, let's go to F16. Here we go. And now the light drop off is very, very sudden. So when you compare this to the earlier shot, Fern had a lot more room to move and still maintain a fairly even exposure, where when she's closer to the light, she's got a lot less room to move before she drops out of exposure or becomes overexposed. So it's all well and good knowing the theory, but of course, putting it to practical uses where it becomes more fun. So what I've got is a large 50 inch umbrella. It's mounted to the ceiling, so it's sort of floating up here. And I've done that because it's really heavy. At the top, I've actually got a speed light in there. So this is gonna be both the light source and a prop. Now in a minute, Fern will come and hold this, but because of social distancing, that's not really possible whilst I'm doing the metering. Now, if you're watching this in the future and you have no idea what I'm talking about by social distancing, that's a really good. 
Okay, so F8 is where we're at. So that's what we're going to be shooting at. Now it's F8 around about Fern's head height, but because light drops off over distance, what are we actually getting down at the floor level? Well, down here, it's F2.8. So between the top and bottom of this shot, there are three stops of light difference. That means Fern's face will be correctly exposed, but her feet will be dark and in shadow, and that should give us some great contrast in this scene. It's exactly the same lighting as before, just turned on its side. Okay, Fern, if you'd like to come in and hang on to the umbrella for me. So I'm gonna dial in F8 on my camera. ISO 200, native ISO for my Olympus camera, 250th of a second. I'm just going to take a test shot without any flash firing, just to make sure that none of the light in the room is affecting the shot, which it isn't. And then let's take a test shot with the flash firing. And straight away, you can see how this works. This looks great. Light comes out from the umbrella, ferns correctly lit around the face, but yes, her feet are nice and underexposed. Okay, so this is a nice, simple setup that gives great lighting. So Fern, are you ready? Let's take a few shots like this. Here we go. The umbrella I'm using is a large parabolic umbrella, which gives really clean edges to the shadows. But more importantly, because it's such a deep umbrella, it's also making it much easier to hide my speed light right at the top. I'm asking Fern to tilt the umbrella towards me so we can see some detail inside the umbrella. But of course, with this lighting, there's no way we're gonna see anything on the outside of the umbrella. It's just gonna blend into the shadows and disappear. So what I've done is I've set up two more flashes either side of the umbrella and their one and only job is to light the surface of the umbrella and make it stand out slightly more from the shadows. Now, let's have a look and see how this goes. What I'm gonna do is turn off the light inside of the umbrella and just see how these two lights light the outside. Okay, Fern, let's take a test shot, see what we get. And as you can see, everything is very nearly black, but there's just that hint of something in the shadow. And that's gonna make a big difference to this picture. So I've turned the light inside the umbrella back on, and these three things combined should just give us that extra little edge on this shot. So Fern, if you're ready, let's take some shots. Here we go. I've been asking Fern to look towards the light for most of these photos because it is overhead lighting and I need some light in her eyes. But because it's such a large light source and so close to Fern, she can actually just turn away slightly and it still works. Light fall off is a really important principle to master in your small home studio. In this case, it meant I got great light on Fern's face, but the floor of my studio was really dark and moody without any extra post-processing. Now, I could have done the opposite. I could have put the light on the far wall and Fern over here, she would have had even illumination because of fall off, meaning she could move around. I wouldn't have had to re-meter, but the photos wouldn't have been anywhere near as exciting. Now, if you've got any questions, or you've enjoyed this video, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon for regular notification of all the brand new videos right here on Adorama TV. And of course, click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. <laughs>